Hey, everybody. We are coming live. Hey, three days in a row. <laughs> just going to find you or find this video on my iPad so I can see comments or ignore them. <laughs> Try not to ignore them, right? Hey, everyone. All right. Glad you guys are joining me today. Sweet. All right. How's everyone holding up? Everybody doing all right? Is anybody making art? Stressing? Trying to figure this new normal out? Right? Hi guys. Welcome, welcome. Sorry my desk is so messy. I was looking at screenshots yesterday of my desk and realizing what I'm doing to you poor people <laughs> by not cleaning my craft sheets and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry, you guys. Hi, everybody. Okay, what just happened? Where did we go? Did it go away? Oh, there we go. <laughs> I'm like, what happened? That was the back of my little lamp. Hi, everybody. All right. Sweet. Okay. So I, I read a lot of your comments about what you'd like to be demoed. Hi, guys. Um, I will say that some of your comments are quite involved. <laughs> and they're great suggestions. They're more... Um, apt for, or they lend themselves more to an online class than a quick demo, but I'll do my best to accommodate and give you guys some things to think about. And one of the questions, a couple of people mentioned they'd like to see my process. And that that's a hard one for me because the only time that I um, make a piece of art from start to finish in a sitting is in class. And at home, that is not at all how I work. And so I thought I would give you guys a little glimpse of, of the process that I use to make art and that I think is so important that, and, and, and that I want you to try. It's actually a two-part process. So the first part is play and the second part is critique. I did change my nail polish, so I do my own nails. So I, I do my own nails with a dip system. So I know drawing face, there is a video out there for drawing faces already. Um, you can find that on YouTube and I mean, I can definitely do it again, but that's also a, a really involved process, but I will try to work those in as well. Okay. So there's a really good book that I um, read a while ago that I highly recommend that you guys acquire. Oh, you know what just, you know what just took one for the team? My rubbing alcohol. <laughs> it just fell down in the back. I was using it to hold my, uh, my, uh, use the, the boom for my, my tripod. Okay. So this book is called Create Perfect Paintings, An Artist's Guide to Visual Thinking, and it's by Nancy Rayner. And I bought this book a number of years ago and then never read it until I was sitting at the computer and all of my computer's bandwidth and power was being taken up rendering videos. And I literally could not focus on Pinterest <laughs> or Facebook or all the other things that I do to kill my time. And so I grabbed this book off the shelf and started reading it. And then I was so annoyed with myself that I hadn't started reading it earlier. And what I really like about it is that Nancy articulates how I create in a way that I have not articulated it in the past. And so I guess I kind of give a here, here to everything Nancy says in this book. But what she talks about are these two phases. She talks about the play phase and the critique phase. So when I say that, I'm, I'm using Nancy's terms that didn't come out of my own head. Um, sometimes I call it the experiment phase and then the what now phase. So you, you've been experimenting for days and now what, right? Uh, so this is this is going to be the play video, and then um, 
we will do the now what video on another day. Sound good? So th the play phase basically means that you are messing around with your process and that you don't have any preconceived notion for how something needs to turn out, what you need to do. You're not imposing any have-tos on yourself. You are uh, just, you know, what happens if I dot, dot, dot. And and then, you know, you think, well, I've got, I've got all this stuff. What do I start with? I tend to start with what I've most recently acquired. So for me, it's gloss spray, right? So some of you guys have these, some of you are still waiting on them. So for, you know, it might be scribble sticks if they're new to you. Okay. So I decide that I am just going to mess around with these, um, supplies and see what happens. And if it ends up ugly, eh, right. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I have a million and bazillion ways of fixing things. So, you know, I don't worry about it. So here's what I use to play. I have a couple of journals. So this one has some open pages. Do you see how I was spraying here with no finished result in mind? Okay. So this one has some open pages that I can mess around with. This one I've been is almost full, but there might be some parts in here that I can you know, think is that, do I still want to add to that or not? Okay. And then I've got a pile of tags here. I've got a couple of small journals that are in progress. So some of them have some stuff on, some of them still have empty pages. In general, I will turn on Netflix and I will pre-gesso everything in general. Um, that said, I haven't done that in a while. So we'll see what happens. Uh, I'm not going to really pre today. So, you know, if you have it around, it's fair game. Okay. And if you don't want to do it in a journal, just cut up cardstock, cut up watercolor paper. It's totally fine. So then what I do is I start with, with, uh, with something. Okay. So here's the page and I think, okay, I've got these new sprays. Let's spray them. So I start spraying and I go, ooh, pretty. What happens if I add a wet brush through that? Well, I'll give you a hint, nothing right now because it's soaked in. I'm like, okay, soaked into the paper. Well, what happens if I spray on top of that again? This is how I discovered that the sprays um, eventually start to resist each other is I was just messing around and watching how they soak in or not. And when they've reached critical soak, they, they start to resist. This white doesn't want to work. Why is it always the white? There we go. I can hear it. Oh. Okay. And so that to me is a good play start might grab a stencil and a rag, wipe it, sweet, throw that and throw that behind me. Okay. Next up. So this time I want to see how it plays well with acrylic. So let's put some acrylic paint on there. My paint water is really dirty and I thought about changing it and then I thought, eh, better not. Too lazy. All right, so throw some paint on there. Now look how much excess paint I have on my brush. So I'm gonna wipe it on some tags. Do, 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 do. And I wipe it until I you know, don't have as much excess. And notice I'm just piling the tags in a pile. I'm not throwing them everywhere so that they can dry properly, all that stuff. I just, I just move quickly. It's almost like you guys should set a timer. Set a timer and see what happens. Get your fingers dirty. Sweet. Okay, so that for sure is swimming in some paint and spray, so I need to let that dry, right? This is gonna get thrown behind me. Now here, there's a lot of spray still on this stencil, so I'm just gonna print it 
there. Maybe spray way wet or white through it. Ha ha! Okay, that's cool. So let's move to this one. Now there's a lot of white spray on this side, right? So now I'm gonna flip it, do it with a different color. I've learned I do have crutch colors. Do you guys feel like that? It's not necessarily a crutch, it's a color story, right? Um, what was the question about drying? Okay, those look cool, yeah. Now what happens if I blot this one and then rub some paint through it instead? Now I do all this while I'm watching Netflix. <laughs> so I don't pay, or, or Amazon Prime or whatever, I don't pay super close attention, really, and I'm, I don't beat myself up, right? Remember, paper has two sides. If I do something and think, well, that didn't work, I don't care. I mean, people, right? So because I'm piling, piling them loosely, they're all right. And if they stick together, what happens? What's the worst? You pull it apart, you've got extra texture. That looks cool. So somebody recommended that I show you guys how I take one of, take my new um, face stencil and then alter it. And I thought that's such a good idea. Here's the problem. I can't find my face stencil. I literally am gonna have to order one. I looked for it forever this morning. If you saw the studio, you would uh, know. All right, so now I am putting spray on top of that acrylic paint layer. So I want you not to be afraid of mixing your media. Now notice that as I am playing, I am still overlapping layers. This is a key to what I do, that if you don't overlap your layers, bad things happen. You will end up with disjointed artwork. You will end up with artwork that doesn't look like um, it, it, it's meant to be, the elements are meant to be together. It's just, it's not gonna be good, you guys. So you, something like this is great practice for overlapping, right? Oh, that turned out cool. So this is another reason why I don't clean my stencils. <laughs> if you don't clean, then, uh, then good things happen, right? Okay, so there's a few tags. Here's the tags that I've done so far. Okay, so now I'm gonna throw those aside. If you really hate it, gesso over it. Yeah, I mean, you can. I just have a million ways to fix things. So I don't even waste gesso on stuff like that. Um, everything is fixable if you just reduce the size of it. <laughs> so if you cut it down, it's much easier. All right, so now I'm gonna put that dirty stencil on this journal page. Let's spray some cheddar on there. Did you break the tags? I don't really know what you mean, Marcy, if I broke the tags. All right, so you get the idea, right? You spray, 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 play, play, play. Let's, let, let's wet that one. What do you think, with water? Wouldn't that be cool? Let's see what happens. So I think sometimes we think our journals need to be this, um, you know, these perfectly composed Pinterest worthy pages. Whereas I, I don't feel like that at all. My art journals are a place of experimentation and play. And I have released from myself from, from any, you know, sort of need for it to be good or, you know, I don't have a preconceived notion about what it, what it needs to do or what it needs to be. Cool. All right, so now let's go back to one of the other journals that's drying. So if no, sp no spray, can we do this with your paint in the blender? You can do it with anything. So let's say you don't have spray today. Um, I just use spray because it's my newest, acqu newest acquired, acquired tool. So here's how I do it with paint. I put out a palette of paint. 
and oh no Marcy I didn't gesso I didn't gesso anything today all right so I, I guess my point is I never not like something so I, I would encourage you guys to get to that point <laughs> that you that you just you don't put that judgment yet okay um, later in critique phase, you know, we're going to be moving to, do I like this? Does this work? Is it usable? Okay. So that that's later's process. Um, right now I don't want you to have any, um, judgments on, on your own work. Okay. So, okay. Those look cool, right? I'm adding a little water. I'm adding a little paint. Notice I try to preserve white space. Can you please demo various ways to use your paint combs? Yep, uh, I'll have to find one, but yes, I can. So a paint comb is just, I just comb paint with it. I, I love it for texture it, and I use it for gessoing too. So I'll have to dig one of those out. I can do that on another day, good idea. All right, so in this way, a little bit of paint goes a really long way. And because I'm not cleaning my brush in between, what's happening is um, you can get lots and lots done in one short amount of time. Oh, look at this one. I'm kind of in love with that one, you guys. <laughs> All right, so then those need to dry, right? Because I'm swimming in water over here. So I'm, now I'm gonna move back to a journal. Okay, so now I'm back to this yellow and green monstrosity. What makes me laugh about the yellow and green is yellow and green were my high school colors. And to this day, I still kinda don't like yellow and green. Uh, but do I care at this point? I do not. I just think it's funny that's what I chose initially. So I'm gonna add some paint, maybe add some water, maybe squish it. Look at that! I wanna marry that, okay. Let's go back to this one. Yeah, how, how I get the paint to move and blend is by not caring. <laughs> uh, you, can, you can quote me on that. And I am adding water to it to get it to move like that. I don't always add water, um, but sometimes if, if I want this look, I need to add water, right? That is turning muddy. All right, I, I don't have much paint left out there. Let me just wipe it up with what, I, what few tags I have left. La, 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 la. So this play phase is really important. Now, this play phase is not necessarily over once I've done this, okay? So then, once I've done this, I've got all these little bits. And then I think, what? I wanna keep playing, I don't wanna think yet. Um, any ideas for what you can do to keep playing without thinking? Just messing around? What are your ideas, my friends? You want to see a larger shot of my work area? Oh, Pat. Pat, Pat. I would have to pay you off. Um, basically, it looks... Well, I'll show you. I have no shame. You guys can judge me. It, it always cracks me up when people say, Oh, I showed your work area to my husband. And now, he, now he feels a lot better about me. Basically saying, you're such a hot mess that... <laughs> That I showed my I showed it to my husband and now he's not as mad at me. I, I'm like, oh, I'm so glad that I can uh, I can uh, serve you in that way. All right, so yes, all, everything you guys have suggested is exactly correct. Um, you could stamp, you could play with stencils. What I do not think about at this point though is I do not think about. Um, focal point, okay? I don't think about it being composed in any way, shape, or form. I, I'm still thinking about, huh, so now I've got all of these wet tags and wet backgrounds. This one looks like Madonna. 
from 1982 had a baby on there. So uh, I don't, I, that's, that's kind of a lot. So I'm going to leave that one. <laughs> Here we have these deliciousness. Now, remember, if your scribble, if your paint is wet, your scribble stick needs to be wet. So I'm sticking my scribble stick in my dirty purple paint water and letting that pigment start to dissolve and activate, activate Madonna's baby. I know. And then I'm going to add a few scribbles. Notice I'm choosing colors that aren't going to go too crazy. Um on me so when in doubt what color you should use is a color that is already existing in your um, piece on your tag on your journal page oh that looks like a person jumping La. I don't add another color at this point necessarily I, I, I save that for critique okay so then I get bored you know also being bored really quickly helps a lot so now I'm like, all right, I did that. Now what? So let me grab these. They're all wet. Like I'll, I'll just flick them on each other if they're still puddly. Perfect. People say, how do you get that very organic look? I have a very organic process. There is no careful way to get this kind of look. You just have to suck it up, baby, and, and, and see what happens, right? All right, so if I don't want to add another color, so my, my choices really are neutrals, um, white, night. If you add black, it's gonna take over, but that's not necessarily bad. I'm gonna add sky. Pick stencils. I grabbed this one because it was on the top. <laughs> no, I don't clean my stencils. Cleaning stencils is not important to me in my life. Actually cleaning anything. I mean, I like to have a really clean house, but I pay, I pay Kathy for that. If Kathy ever breaks up with me, oh my gosh, you guys. I, I'm if she do, if my house cleaner dumps me, she's not just a house cleaner. She's a friend and she is a miracle worker because she can do things that I cannot do. My iPad is going to die here in a minute, so I'm not going to be able to see anything that you say. All right, so those that's looking good with a little stenciling. What do you guys think? Let's turn to the journal pages. This one, I think, because I hadn't gessoed, see how it really, the spray really soaked in? I think it definitely needs stenciling. Definitely, definitely, definitely. I love the, I love the look of it. So stenciling, I'm, I would always overlap the stenciling. Never put it out and then float it out in the middle of nowhere. Your layers need to overlap 30 to 50%. And if they don't, it's gonna look like a sticker sneeze mixed media style. I tell that story sometimes about how we all started scrapbooking in the 90s and we would just sticker sneeze Mrs. Grossman's stickers over everything after we'd cut our photos into uh, into crazy shapes with Fisker's dragon scissors and all that nonsense. Um, and we didn't really understand about composition and design yet. And I think the, the mixed media equivalent of a sticker sneeze, sneeze is layers that don't connect. <laughs> It's collage everywhere. Yeah. Okay. That's, I, I dig that. That looks good. So everyone has a different level of layering. I don't want to say competency. That's not the right word. Um, like the, the kind of layering that you can stand. Okay. So I tend to be in my background just a couple of layers like three or three to five layers max in my back in, in my in my background playing okay 
So I'm not thinking to myself, self, you're making a background. I'm still thinking I'm playing, but I do stop myself, okay? And boredom helps, but also I have so many um, years of overdoing and that I've been able to learn. So if you overdo stuff, does it matter? It doesn't. It doesn't matter one bit. Who gives a rip if you overdo something? I, you know, no problem. But I like that. That's pretty cool. All right, let's go back to my text. Let's go back to Madonna. I would start singing, but I don't want YouTube to uh, hide my video. I'm gonna flick on there a little bit. You could flick with paint, you could flick with scribble stick. Oh, I, I kind of dig the Madonna the Madonna's baby page. I really, <laughs> I really like that one. I think it's so cool. And then if I flick on one thing, I flick on all things. Flick, 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 flick. Oh, that, that tag's sitting in the background forgotten. Look how look, good it looks with blue, blue uh, ocean gloss spray flicked all over it. If you want to flick with scribble stick, what you do is you hold the stick in your hand. You wet the brush. Dissolve some of that stick. It's going to be a weird color because my water's purple. And then flick downward. Is it showing up? Let's see if I can get it to show up here. It's getting a really nice fine flickage. Can you see the flicking? <laughs> I do kind of snort on purpose. I mean, I wouldn't snort in my everyday life. It just tends to be my teacher persona. Okay. So then, you know, I would do this for hours, you guys, hours and hours and hours. Um, when I get bored messing around with the scribble stick, I'll turn to a different stencil. When I get bored messing around with the stencil, I might find a stamp. So I'm gonna come back to the stamp. Oh, Elizabeth, dig out your art journal. The great thing about the art journal, again, I think people tend to, people that tend to think of art journaling like scrapbooking, y'all think that it, it's gotta be this composed, finished thing. No, it, this is play, experiment, experimentation. So I'm wetting the stamp with water. I am now adding scribble stick. The scribble stick will not go on the stamp if you do not wet the stamp first. You must wet the stamp. Uh, I'm sticking with colors that exist in my background, okay, because I don't necessarily want this to become focal point. So not only do I do this for hours, you guys, sometimes I do it for days. Like sometimes nothing composed ends up from my, from my work for my studio if I'm not feeling it. I, I don't put any have to conditions on my art making. Uh, this is my new stamp block, yes. I don't put any have to conditions on it. I, I just say to myself, self, I feel like making today and I'm in the mood to play. And some days I ha I'm overrun by all these little journal pages that I've started and backgrounds and tags and experiments and bits and bobs everywhere that I think, okay, self, now it's time to make something out of these. Um, but if I'm not feeling it, I do not force it. I will say that if you play every day, though, good things will happen to you artistically and mentally. Okay, so I might add that to a few. This is one from yesterday. That's kind of a hot. Oh, that was what we used for uh, for Scraffito prints. Ooh, that turned out cool. this again. Sweet. Okay, so after I've played for hours, sometimes days, I will have sometimes entire journals full of experiments. Entire journals. Like, I can do an entire journal just playing and messing around. Um, and then I, I have literal bins full of of these tags, of, paid, of uh, watercolor papers, all that good stuff. And I dug some out 
to show you some of the things that I do during my play process. Yeah, wet the stamp first with water, then scribble stick on the stamp, and then stamp, okay? So like this was a, a gel plate and I had done one stamped image on it, never used it. Oop, that just went behind. This is a little collage I did. Was in the mood to collage that day, never did it. Gel plate with some tissue, little crazy guy drawing. All of this stuck stuff was in my box. Um, tag with one stamp on it. Really, really ugly gel print. Whew, you know why that's ugly? Color choice color choice uh something i started never finished another really ugly gel print i was really pumping out ugly ones that day right oh well okay a couple you'll see you'll find a lot of these sometimes i'm only in the mood to stamp and color so i've said before that i pre-stamp everything um and i'll do it either on cardstock or i actually have like wire bound journals i do it in a dilutions because that paper's so lovely to stamp on so pre-stamp I don't usually pre-color, but that day I must have felt like coloring fishies. So I've got all these fishies ready-made. Okay, Pat, your wishes are gonna come true. I'm gonna show you the chaos of this. Um, before, I, before I finish blabbing at you though about playing, please play. You play, it's in the play phase that you become a better artist. It's where you make discoveries that you, uh, Discoveries about your supplies, about your abilities. It's where you practice. It's where you give yourself permission. And you must release yourself from the outcome of it being good. So listen, I've got a million ways to fix things. I have a million ways to use all this stuff. So we can talk about that in daily demos. But I don't want you to restrict yourself. I don't want any have-tos. This is get-to, not have-to. And also, um, I, I want you to be prolific quality comes with quantity so i mean pile you should have piles of the stuff piles of playing okay piles and piles and piles this play phase for me i can't make art if i haven't played so let's say something's due for me some or i have to come up with xyz for a show or a sample i have to play first i literally cannot sit down and create something for a deadline if I have not put in that play time. It's, it's, like, it's like exercising. Play is exercising and all the training that you do, and then the, 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 the game, the finale that you show up for is the critique phase that we'll talk about on another day. Okay, you guys. I'm going to take my phone out. So here is one side of my desk. <laughs> Here's my drawers open. I know we do need, we do need a bulk buy. I need a bulk buy of white tags. I tried to I tried to get them. There's my iPad that's about to die, so I can see your comments or ignore your comments. This side I've got um, gloss sprays at the ready. This was a little. I found this in the spice department of TJ Maxx. Hey, did you guys hear that TJ Maxx is going to close? <laughs> I'm like, or, you know, for the Corona stuff. I was like, this really is the apocalypse, you guys. This is all right. And then this this part of my um, desk above my beautiful sewing machine always has half done stuff as well. Stuff that I've recently touched. Oh, remember that demo from yesterday? Okay, so that might sit there for a while before I throw it into uh yeah i'm a hot mess you guys all right so this is my workspace is really small actually uh and then as you pan around here um up here are my books so i decided on sundays i'm gonna do just uh tell you guys about a couple of my favorite art books a little bit like we did today but longer my poor sewing machine my sewing machine it's it's used for art it's not used for real sewing so it's fine and this is my new sewing machine. You should have seen how the old one looked. Um, and then I, in theory, I'm supposed to have blank substrates here, in theory. Um, and then this is my collage fodder box, which I've now actually extended to two boxes. And so collage fodder, I have sheets of collage collective in here. We'll do a separate one, uh, demo video about collage collective. Um, you know, sometimes I just, sometimes I throw ev literally everything in this box away because you don't know what's at the bottom, you guys. <laughs> you truly don't know. So I'll dig through and see what I can see. Stuff that I would have saved at one point. This is, this is all creative results of playing. That down here. These down here are stuff that I recently touched. 
um, recently played with journals that I so, so see the here's a, here's another journal laying around you'll always see tons of journals on my floor because I always have them drying behind me always so there's one, a couple there there's a bunch of crap there there's one two three four there five six so I'm counting six journal oh seven because there's one so this is a pile of pages I was I was tearing out that I'm going to um, package up to maybe sell, see if they make the cut for selling. So this is that what that is. Here's another journal I was working in recently. Uh, yeah, so I kind of work surrounded by absolute critic piss. This is the Tim's new um, shelves. I still have not filled it up because I still don't know what else I want to put in it and where I'm going to put it. Um, journals here that, that I cannibalize lots and lots of art book well this makes me laugh finished pages and samples a lot of um, samples that were in my book are in here um I think this was a sample this is I think paper bag studio stamps from Robin Marie what brand of tennis shoes are you wearing so I am wearing these are made by New Balance they are called PF flyers PF stands for posture posture foundation um, and they have a better insole than a Converse shoe. Uh, the bad thing is I think they only come in men's sizes, but because I wear a size 10 women's, I can, I can buy a size eight men's. So yeah, posture foundation and they save my feet. And also, can I also recommend that you guys buy Bomba socks? <laughs> Bomba socks are awesome. You guys, I, I can't say enough good about Bomba socks. All right. So if you dig around in here, you'll see, um, old, projects originals from my book will be in here <laughs> the most ugly horse ride me that's, that's delightful samples that i've done well that, i like that one all right so you get the idea right and then ephemera is there so I'm, i try to be organized but i'm not really you guys because i still have <laughs> I still have a pile of stuff here, and then my closet is a giant pile. So if any of you ever want to want to come and try to organize me, yeah, I'll wash the guest room sheets. Let me know. All right, I hope that's helpful. I hope this encouraged you guys to play. It wasn't necessarily um, it wasn't necessarily a you know product demo as much as it is an intellectual idea, and that I want you guys to play, 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 play. Will you guys do that for me? And then, <laughs> Michelle, good luck. You're going to need like four weeks. You might have to call in sick to your job. The room might might have to be gutted, to be fair. To be fair, it might. <laughs> I'm glad some of you have roofs, worse rooms. Oh, my gosh. Paint. You guys. Oh, have mercy. Half done. Over there are big, bigger projects. I bought a Cameo. I cut one thing with it. Yeah, it's a hot mess, you guys. All right, so part two of this live is going to be the critique phase. And that basically will co cover a little bit of collage. And I hope this helps. And just play, like, it's today Friday. I don't even know what day it is. So how about we give you the weekend to play and Monday let's talk about the critique phase. Um, I'm still going to pop on briefly Saturday and Sunday. And Sunday, I'm going to do book, you know, just talk about a couple of um, books that I am in love with. And Saturday, I don't know what we'll do something really simple. Um, but p play this whole weekend. Um, play, play, play. Get yourself a ton of collage fodder. If you have my collage collective, dig that out because you'll want that on Monday as well. If you don't have it, it's okay. Um, but we are going to deal. Here, here's even more play stuff. You guys have mercy. How do I handle all this stuff? All right. So, um, and we will see you this weekend for short, short demos, short quickies. And then Monday, we're going to be part two critique. Okay. Love you guys. Appreciate you. Have a great weekend. Stay safe. Stay home.
and play with what you have. You don't have to buy anything to do this. You have enough. You have paint. You might have dilutions. Guess what? That'll work great. Pull out your dilutions. Pull out dilution spray. Pull out Tim's distress stuff. Pull it all out and have a, have a giant play session. If you run out of paper, use cardboard boxes. <laughs> all right. See you guys later.